make your heart his home. Yes. Lord, we need you to live innocent through us today. today will be coming from Psalms 102, and we're going to read from the first to the twelfth verse. I'll be teaching and preaching out of the New International Version, but before we go into the uh, preaching moment, there's a mantra that I always do before we go into the preaching. If you raise your Bibles above your head and those at home and repeat after me. Living water. Living water. Living water. Living water. Living water. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Till we thirst no more. And the scripture reads, Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me. When I am in distress, turn your ear to me. When I call, answer me quickly. For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is belighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my distress, I groan loud and am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake and have become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long, my enemies taunt me. Those who railed against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. Because of your great wrath, for have taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like the evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures throughout all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion. May you be blessed by the hearing and the reading of the word of God. You may be seated in this presence. Before we go into the preaching moment, I have to, I have to petition the Father because uh, I am just a mere mortal. I am a weak vessel and I am unable to do this without his help. Amen. Father, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to, to preach and handle your sacred oracles. Lord, I decrease as you will increase. Master, hide me behind Calvary's bloody cross at the foot, Lord. Lord, where you would get all the glory and the honor, oh God, that I would just be a humble servant and vessel used by you. So Lord, let it not be my words, but let it be your words. Let your people be impacted in their hearts and in their minds, as well as me, because it is a double-edged sword. Let it cut me while it cuts them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The title of our message today is, I Cry Out During My Dark Night of the Soul. The COVID-19 pandemic season social and political unrest, social distancing, isolation, and financial unassurance, hate spewing everywhere, sickness, loss of loved ones. Even for the most devout Christian, this physical and spiritual climate has become overwhelming for many. A dark night of the soul the dark night symbolizing obscuration and the soul. 
This usually refers to an individual's true essence. In other words, the dark night of the soul is an obscuration of one's true self. Tell it. The obscuration may consist of previous ideas or what one believes about themselves or the world. Amen. That is thrown into question, usually triggered by long periods of suffering, causing something like a spiritual depression. Look at our foundational text. In Psalms 102, yeah. is described as a prayer of an afflicted person who has grown weak and pours out a lament before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Look at what the psalmist says in verses 1 and 2 in our text. It says, Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me. Please, Lord. Mm -hmm. A great deal of affliction, the psalmist cries out to God, begging for mercy. Isn't that what we're doing in our current situation in the world? Many of us are yelling, God, why? God, why? Uncle, uncle, God, I give. Please let it stop. Yeah. I've had enough. I can recall a great man of God that was under great affliction. A thorn in his side. Tell it. This man was the Apostle Paul yeah, sir. in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. Three times Paul pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me. See, the thorn that Paul had been given was to prevent him from becoming conceited. And not only was Paul given a thorn, also received a messenger of Satan to torment him. So, so you can undergo suffering as well as letting all hell break through in your life. Listen. Okay. But see, it's for a preparation by God. Preparation. It's only a test. It's only a test. That's right. Do it. I know many of you are saying, Reverend Andrews, what are you saying? I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. There will be times in your walk with God where there are the dark nights of the soul come, yeah. where you question everything. Does God care? Doesn't he see I'm hurting? Many of us start questioning our faith. And God always responds. If we don't like the response, he still responds. In that same text in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, God tells Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, for, for my power is made perfect in weakness. See, that, that's the issue in going through the dark night of the soul or suffering or being tested. We won't allow to be weak. See, see, weakness is controlled, uh, uh, is a controlled uh, strength. Mm -hmm. See, see, if, if you're strong in your own self, we don't have the ability to accomplish the things that God has for us. God has given us a free will, right? Yes. So if we have free will and I'm telling God I can do it myself, mm -hmm. what will God do? God will move aside and let you do it. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us are in the predicaments that we're in because we refuse to allow the weakness and the self-sufficiency self to overrule instead of being uh, codependent on God. Mm -hmm. 
if we rely on him totally, he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. You don't want to say that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at verses 3 through 10 in our foundational text in Psalms 102. Uh, For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like growing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. Uh, I forget to eat my food. I'm in distress. I groan aloud. I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert isle, like the owl among the ruins. I lie awake. I have become like a bird on the roof. All day long, my enemies taunt me. You know, at your prospective workplaces and whatnot. Where is your God now? You know, you're a Christian, right? Why isn't he helping you? You're, in, you're enduring this pandemic as well as we are. But see, the, the great thing about God is that even though we're in the midst of the trial, he sustains us through the trial. Yes. Those that are outside of him are reduced to rubble in their spirit because they don't know what's happening to them. But we have 66 books. We have a library on prophecy that the Lord has given to us to lead us into all truth. Mm -hmm. Study the scriptures to find yourself approved. Yes. You have to study them. Then you won't be uh, beguiled or be unaware of the test that's coming. Amen. Preparation will be right where you need it. That's right. See, see the, the psalmist, he, he tells us a story of how deep his despair is. And all the different ranges of physical, emotional, and spiritual grief he has. That's all of us. Mm -hmm. Loved ones have passed away. Uh, we even have uh, fought off maybe COVID our actual selves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, everything in life is different. Yeah. And it will set up grief, a depression. Mm -hmm. Because we are believers. See, this... This, this, this dark night of the soul is a spiritual depression. Unlike other depressions, this, this is like we know God, but where is God? You know, but he, he still sits on the throne. He, look, he sits high, but yet looks low. He's still with us. See, see, the psalmist is overwhelmed by his loneliness and isolation. Social distancing. We're all in the houses. You miss your loved ones. You want to see them in a certain way. But this spiritual isolation mm -hmm. is only for you to become closer with God. Yes. Yes. See, see, God is a, is a jealous God. Yeah, he don't want to share you with anything. That's right. He don't want to share you with external things. Mm -hmm. He don't even want to share you with yourself. That's why he hates the pride. Because you're so absorbed in yourself till you can't see the giver of life. Say it. Say it. Sir. So all that passes by you and, and you never get into true relationship. You're actually in, in religion. Mm -hmm. I can practice going to church. I can practice people who speak in tongues. These are all repetitive things that they've learned behaviors. Mm -hmm. See, relationship uh, causes time. If you're dating in anyone, how do you get close to the person unless you date them? Right. You sit down with them. Right. You suck with them. You dine with them. You have a, a interaction between one another. Not me just coming with requests to the master, mm -hmm. but an actual dialogue. What do you require of thee? Amen. 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 So I know this spiritual grief personally. I felt the stress working as a first liner in healthcare in the midst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Coming home every day trying to keep myself safe, my wife safe. Yes. Mm -hmm. And all while this is going on, my mother is battling an invisible foe by the name of cancer. Mm -hmm. See, trying to walk out my 
purpose and call and ministry in a fallen world with all the attacks of the evil one physically and mentally. See, like the old saints used to say of old, my granny used to say, it's more than a notion. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's more than a notion. I was listening uh, in the car, and it just, it went through the radio, you know, you would hear old, old tune or whatnot, you know, Pastor Weber said, about he listens to music, sometimes it quiets him in his spirit, and this particular day, this was just one of those days that had uh, been traumatic, you know, I was feeling down, trying from, from the work environment, and just everything, my mother, uh, you know, my, my wife feeling like um, the walls are closing in because of the way that we have to live now. Yeah. And it was a song that came on the radio. It was, uh, it was uh, produced in 1996. That's when, when the whole rap thing first came out, when they didn't have so much obscenities in, 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 in their songs. But it was a group by the name of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And, the record was called The Message, and I thought that was uh, very ironic to what's going on right now. Okay. And one of the lyrics of the song was, was this, don't push me cause I'm close to the edge. I'm, by, I'm trying not to lose my head. Synopsis. Yeah. I'm trying not to lose my mind in the midst of chaos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what this is what they were saying in 1996. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As the wisest man of the Bible would say, Solomon, mm -hmm. nothing is new under the sun. Right. Yeah. See, this is this is a pandemic, but there's been many pandemics throughout history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I want to get across to you is the faithfulness of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the same yesterday, yeah, yeah. today, yeah. and forevermore. Yeah. He didn't change in any of those situations. Mm -hmm. It looked the bleakest of all times at that moment. Yes. But we look to the hills from which our help cometh, yeah. and our help cometh yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. And we are present in 2020 looking at another pandemic, yeah. but God changes not. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, so, so this dark light of the soul is, is not exclusive to just, just us. Many great men of faith have endured this depression. In Psalm 6 and 6, King David soaked his pillow in tears. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, in, in, chap in chapters 8, in 18 and 12 and 13, it talked about his weeping over the people. And this was a legitimate depression because he was the man of God. He knows God. Mm -hmm. But why is this happening in the world? Mm -hmm. See, some things are left as a mystery that God does not let us in on. See, the, the, the pivotal thing that we should rely on is what Pastor Ware was saying this morning. See, the faith Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things yet not seen. So my faith has to elevate to another level than what it has previously because this time is something that we, we, we say we haven't seen. It looks a little different. You know, Satan will come with a few different spins. He'll come with a remix. But one thing is for certain, the infallible word of God and God didn't change. So if my faith resides in him, I'm okay, yeah. even if I don't feel okay. Yeah. See, I don't always feel okay. Mm -hmm. We don't. Look, look, look at Elijah. Yeah. See, most of us are dealing with fear because of this. Elijah was dealing with fear because of Jezebel. She had killed out all the prophets. He's yeah. in the cave, shaking like a leaf, yeah. like Don Knotts. <laughs> he didn't ask God, look, I'm so afraid when you take my life. Mm -hmm. He said, get up. He didn't bring a raven. He said, I'm going to feed you because I got to strengthen you. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on in the, in, in, the, in the spiritual isolation. God is feeding us his word. 
where he's feeding us his character. Yes. He's feeding us all of this if we pay attention and open our eyes and be receptive to what thus says the Lord, Amen. not what thus says the world. Because the world and man will fool you every time. See, yeah. see, people have, 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 have aligned themselves with political parties and, 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 and men of, of valor or men of renown. See, the same thing happened at the Tower of Babel with Namrod. He got everybody to follow him, and he was dictating to the world. See, they had made their own religion outside of God, and they were worshiping man instead of worshiping God. See, this is the time that you got to get on your knees until they're, until they're bleeding. You got to put on your spiritual knee pad and say, to God I live and to God I die. Everything that he said is right. Let man be a lie and God be the truth. Yeah. This is where we are as Christians. You're rich. To be a real Christian in this day and age, you've got to put on your boots, you've got to get grounded, and you've got to get shooted in the preparation of the gospel. The full armor of God is required in this hour. Because what you have to really have to remember. Our adversary, Satan, mm -hmm. goes around like a roaring lion seeking mm -hmm. out who he may devour. Yeah. Now, he's on his job, but you got to remember, because Jesus knocked his teeth out at Calvary. He's a lion that goes around that got dentures. He yells loud, but all he can do is yell. His wife is not the same. Amen. Amen. See, but th this is no ordinary fit of depression. But it's a depression that is linked to a crisis of faith. Tell it. A crisis that comes when one senses the absence of God or gives rise to the feeling of abandonment in him. Spiritual depression is real and can be acute. Ask how a person of faith can experience such spiritual lows, but this is the thing. Whatever it is that provokes, provokes it does not take away from its reality. Right. See, our, our faith is not a constant action. That's right. It's mobile. Mm -hmm. It vacillates. It, wa it wavers. We move from glory to glory yes. and faith to faith. Yes. So, so it, it, and different, because faith is experiential as well. Mm -hmm. So you got to experience certain things. And God and the Holy Spirit are getting you over the hump. Yes. So when you come to the next experience in life, you will be bold as lions because you said, my God changes not. I can trust him at his word. See, you don't get what you need because there's doubt in you. I'm going to pray, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Yeah, man. Truth. Mm. Truth. When I cry out, Lord, I believe. Help thou with my unbelief. Yes. Mark 9 and 24. And that's many of our conversations. I believe on the external. But inwardly, there's doubt. There's fear and unbelief. And the thing about spiritual warfare, we, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and evil even in the heavenly places. So what they do, when they start talking about a principality, you're not talking about a regular demon, you're talking about a spiritual force. Mm -hmm. Like the prince of Persia that, that Daniel, Daniel had to deal with. His prayer was yeah. answered. Many of your prayers have been answered. Yeah. But Gabriel and Michael are still fighting the prince of Detroit. <laughs> right now. And he's a gangster. That's right. That's why you have drugs on every corner, impoverished areas. It's not because it's a man that's controlling this. It's a spiritual.
spiritual Spirit. force that's behind this. If we yeah. get it right at the root, the spiritual force behind things, we can deal with the with the with the metaphysical that's yeah. before us. Everything is rooted in the spirit. All right. Good. That's where we have to go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Uh, see, this whole concept is like is like this because we have to believe God in another level. Say, we'll have joy. But joy is given from God. Mm -hmm. Then you have happiness. A lot of people are falling aside because they're looking at the temple things. Mm -hmm. See, joy is there regardless. It's an eternal thing. Yeah. And then uh, happiness is a temporal thing. So we have to ride this thing out in such a way that it's showing our total commitment to God. Mm -hmm. Most of us are, are getting tossed. In, 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 in the sea, in, in the raging storm, mm -hmm. having gotten anchored in Jesus. Mm -hmm. We'll say it, but it's something that comes along that shakes your faith. Mm -hmm. A death mm -hmm. or a sickness. You get shaken. But you can't get shaken with God. Mm -hmm. You have to believe him at his word. Yeah. This is the only way that you will progress out of it because mm -hmm. Satan is not going to change. Mm -hmm. He's been a liar from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And all he wants to do is destroy you. That's right. Yeah. So, so, so don't let despair sink in. Yeah. The Lord says to rejoice. rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. rejoice. Yeah. See, see, feelings are misleading. Mm -hmm. Feelings are rooted in the soul. And if I'm having a dark night of the soul, mm -hmm. how can I trust my feelings? Mm -hmm. The only thing I can trust is God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. For, for God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts yeah. to give to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have a treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Yeah. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. See, see, this is this is this is a this is a a, 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 a a text of depression. We hard pressed on every side. I'm I'm, per, I'm perplexed. I'm confused. I don't know why this happened. Why is it happening, Lord? But not in despair. That's the depression part. So not in despair. We got to hold on to the joy that God put in our hearts. Yes. That's what you have to hold on to. You're rich. Even when you don't feel like it. Because yeah. it's not about your feelings. Yeah. Yeah. It's, six, it's six ways to deal with this, this depression, this dark night of the soul. Spend time alone with God mm -hmm. and with Scripture. Allow yourself time for processing. This, this can begin a unique and personal understanding of the scriptures. Yes, in yes. Psalm 91, in one, it explicitly tells us that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. He tells you he'll protect you. Amen. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, Amen. my God in whom I trust. Yes, sir. That's who I trust in. Amen. Number two, deal with the negative. It's easy to ignore the root of the feelings or to put off dealing with them altogether. But feelings, 
head on while taking care of yourself. Do not be afraid to embrace in the experience of suffering and seek meaning in it so you have confidence in the process. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. Yeah. My peace My I peace. give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Amen. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Number three, find someone who understands. We're in the perfect place at Northwestern mm -hmm. Community Baptist. Pastor Ware is trained in counseling. Not only is he pastor, but you can get with him on the side if you're really dealing with issues Amen. that he's been formally trained in how to address. Amen. Many people don't have that access. Amen. But what a great treasure to be able to have that access. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Find a high-level mentor who can offer wise counsel or an accountable accountability partner who has walked through the same tribulations and survived them. A guy who has gone through the dark night of the soul. In Proverbs 5 and 22, without counsel, plans fall. But with many advisors, they succeed. In Proverbs 11 and 14, where there is no guidance, a people fall, but in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. See, you need good, godly people to surround you oh, during right. these times. That's yeah, right. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you can't look to, to the, uh, the God of CNN, uh, the, God, uh, the God of stars and HBO. You know, he's going to tell you all the things that you want to hear, but none of the things that you need to hear. A good counselor is going to make you face some issues. James 1 and 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, yes. let him ask God, yes. who God. gives generously to all without reproach, yes. and it will be given him. Yes. So God's not going to withhold wisdom for, for, for you when you're dealing with these issues. He wants you to know. Yes. He don't want to keep you in the dark. He wants to keep you in the light. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Psalm 16 and 7. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. All right. In the night, I also my heart instructs me. Right. So if I'm getting counsel from God, I can listen to what my heart is saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. If my soul is a rebel and it's running on its own and it's not getting counsel from God, mm -hmm. I should not even listen to me. Right. <laughs> Lord, save me from me. From you. Yeah. Yeah. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you 